Hey everybody, welcome back. We're going to do something different today and condense 10 hours of space exploration gameplay into approximately 30 minutes is going to be the target. And I'm calculating that based on, well, we're probably a little bit more than 10 hours overall based on the videos usually go longer than an hour and I think we're going to do 10 of them. And uh, we are doing a 20 times factor speed factor in terms of uh what we're going to shoot to do here and as you can see the video is already playing there i'm actually going to uh restart it here in a second and talk about what's going on so instead of trying to do a montage we're gonna just kind of watch i'm going to trim out the really boring parts like the intros and outros and stuff like that most likely and we're just going to look at what's going on and talk about Oh, you know, things are a lot different than than when we started this out. That was months ago. And uh, we're just going to kind of describe what's going on and condense it all down and hopefully make a lot more interesting video than the long plays than I usually do. And for anybody who is watching who doesn't hasn't seen any of my other videos, all of the content here is in my long play videos. Uh, numbers one through ten is what's going to be in this video. So if you're curious go ahead and you know check those out if you like the longer format stuff it's kind of chill i will warn you the first couple videos we didn't get the audio levels right so this is where it all started in the title screen I was talking about how i had played this mod pack before just a little bit um tearing down the spaceship uh had one of my least favorite starts ever so this is kind of the relatively boring beginning dance that you do in vanilla in in this uh this starting patch was rough it was not a pleasant one and the starting area in general was a little rough for a couple of reasons here we go kind of taking a look around seeing what we have around us where the choke the uh, choke points are let's see what we're doing next okay got copper up this is kind of the first thing for space exploration that you start to see is different is you have to use burner assemblers and burner uh, research labs, which is a bit of a departure. In some ways, it's actually kind of a little bit easier because you can just have them kind of steal coal from each other. Uh, and in, in some ways, it is easier. In others, it, it's kind of a pain. Uh, so we're getting gear wheels on the belt. Stone bricks are going up there. In my opinion, stone bricks are one of the biggest early game departures from vanilla. You need a lot more of them. You need them earlier, and they're just they're involved in so many different things. Now we have labs up. We're starting to automate burner miners right into furnaces and get that going better. This is kind of not too dissimilar from vanilla. There is another big first difference. We have a turbine burner, which is basically kind of like a boiler, but that doesn't require water and is more in inefficient. Uh, we're getting our first battery of smelters up. I believe this one's for iron. And we're thinking that we have plenty of room over to the right here uh, to put all of our smelting batteries. And we are very sorely mistaken and we're starting to Already you can see the spaghetti starting to form uh, at the spaghetti factory as we uh, <laughs> deal with the realities of iron mixed with coal, mixed with stone, mixed with more coal. Uh, at this point we're starting to lay out the bus and we have iron plates that we want to get onto the bus here. Um, I got a little lazy here and I didn't I just kind of slapped down some assemblers to make things locally. can't remember if I went down there because I thought I saw a biter or something, but we're kind of thinking here that this is where the mall's going to go. And we start to automate engines uh, and transport belts, not at any kind of scale uh, yet. But this will be the beginning of a very, very spaghetti-like and messy mall here. Episode 2 starts out, and we pretty much know from the outset that we need to automate engines, or small small one-cylinder engines, whatever they're called. Uh, and so we start to set that up here, and it is, again, a case of not leaving ourselves enough space. You can kind of see that copper patch on the left giving us trouble, but 
This kind of represents another one of the big early departures from vanilla in space exploration. You have uh, required even for transport belts, you have a whole, instead of just gear wheels and plates, it's gear wheels, plates, and engines, and that's actually quite a bit of a lift uh, in terms of the early complexity. We're starting to get our other a second smelter array up. I think this one's going to be copper or stone bricks. I can't remember which one it was going to be. Probably copper if I had to guess. And because we know that we're going to need to do motors, although I don't think we do motors in this. Uh, electric motors, I don't think we do in this video. I'm not sure. So we continue to kind of pound on engines here. And then I think we... Oh, we do start to get motors. And we come up with a little bit of a kind of a repeatable design for... The motor outputs here, there's a lot of sort of monologue and thinking out loud here about what we're doing. And um, not that I'm terribly better at this these days, but I definitely was way worse at automating uh, space exploration things back then. So we continue to work on our smelter arrays. Now we have copper plates coming in. Uh, we're going to continue to kind of spaghettify everything here. Uh, we're going to add more miners. Uh, just kind of happenstance. We had some mixed ores coming in on the belts here, and this is where the spaghetti really starts to early on go to the next level. Um, and that <laughs> 25 plus hours later, actually 30 plus hours later, that spaghetti still exists and is in use in a meaningful way. Like we're continuing to wire things into it. This entire mineral patch is gone by now, but still. Um, it was very difficult to place things here. And like I kind of talk about in the videos, I am very... Uh, adamant that I am going to clear out the entire mineral patch. I will not just leave it there and build on it. I think that's disgusting. I I just can't get myself to do that. It really grinds my gears to do that. So we just got a stone smelter array up, I think. Looks like stone bricks. Uh, at some point here, we'll do sand too. We have another one or two turbine burners going up because power is becoming an issue, which will continue to be the case through the rest of the playthrough so far, even though we're up to hour like 30 as I do the first 10 hours here kind of go back start to realize that we're going to need to go around that copper patch because we want to make sure that we can use it later and we haven't built on top of it and that copper patch actually turns out to be not nearly as big as it looks at least to me uh, the mineral distribution in this game is considerably different from vanilla we're starting to set up red science here uh, this will actually be the beginning of an array of research labs that will take us all the way up until we leave the planet. And I'm not sure what I'm doing here just yet. Uh, oh, sand. Uh, we're starting to get sand and get pretty much right up on the end of the episode here. So we called it at sand and then we'll see where episode three starts out. So at the beginning of this, we kind of forget for a few that we were doing sand. I mean, I think we're talking about it here, but then we go over and start to really scale up our iron production for whatever reason. I forget what prompted that. Uh, again, this mixed mineral patch is just the bane of my existence. And now we're going to start to stand up a glass array without really balancing the numbers perfectly. The The sand requirements there are pretty rough, um, just in terms of how much that yellow belt can deliver. So now we're getting our research labs actually set up. I skipped ahead here a bit. There was a lot of inventory viewing there for a second. What we're doing here is we're going after green signs. We already have red up. Um, this is another thing that's more complicated in vanilla. It's a transport belt and an inserter. And it's the same thing here, but both of those things have bigger requirements. So they both take motors, I think. And the inserter, unlike vanilla, actually needs a burner inserter to craft. In addition to that, they actually use iron sticks as well. So you have to kind of construct the entire tree and you have to bring in, well, I chose to bring in um, engines from where we were constructing them to the right. And we tried to come up with a tileable design here for this, and I think it does work. The thing is, is that I can tell you 30 hours in, we still are not using it. We, we never tiled that anymore. Maybe like one more, but I don't even think we did that. We have never bottlenecked on green science. We have on red science, interestingly enough. Um, red science is usually one of the first things to fail. So over here, we're starting to get actual, you know, first class mall stuff set up. Of course, we haven't left ourselves nearly enough room. Um, but I mean, we kind of knew that at the time. I think that we commented the same here. But you can see we're right up on the electric motor production there. 
Sardinal to main inserters so that we have those to just pick up. And this is basically the beginnings of a mall, right? There's long-handed inserters, pretty standard stuff. I really embrace the spaghetti throughout this entire run, and this is no different. So we continue here and start to automate assemblers and just continue on our way with actually getting some scalable engine production and electric motor production going. Uh, looks like we had a little bit of a scaling issue over on the mining side of things. Yep, more iron. Constant, constant issues with mixed ores coming out of those miners. So, now we're on to episode 4. Again, each one is a bit over an hour back then. These days, sometimes they go to like 2. Uh, we kind of continue with the spaghetti here. And at this point, we really start to have splitters sorting out mixed doors that are coming from there. We spot that iron patch there knowing that we need steel and that we're going to need to scale up iron and that the little starter iron patch that we have is just never going to cut it. And so we go down there, well, later and start to pull that up. We continue on our mall knowing that we're about to need a bunch of electric miners. Um, all pretty standard stuff with the beginnings of the mall up. Really not that hard to automate. We start to bring this up. Realize that landfill is super expensive. In vanilla, I think it's 20 stone per landfill. In this thing, it's 50, and we don't have as much stone as you generally have in vanilla when you start out. So, we get our stone, and with a mix of landfill and underground belts, we continue to get our bigger iron mine going here. We kind of fill in the ocean a bit here, the lake, whatever it is. Uh, working toward getting steel going. Uh, we continue to have power issues. We haven't done boilers yet. Kind of been putting that off. And we're also having supply issues on coal, so we start to scale that up. And we still have the issue of mixed ores coming out on those belts. So that's... Uh, <laughs> the starter patch in this was really, really obnoxious. So, so at this point, we start to look at steel ratios, you know, to iron to steel. We put a couple smelters down to be able to get the steel that we need to start to make... Uh, ammo, because it looks like we're about to uh, have some collaboration with some biters, and we're in the car going to talk to some biters and hang out for a bit. Uh, that was a pretty small, if I recall, a little stint that we did there. I don't think that was too long-lived. Um, we might have gotten a couple of attacks, or we might have just been being proactive. Uh, the biters actually are pretty not that pronounced in this mod pack so far. And I'll even go ahead and speak ahead, even in the first 30 hours, really not that pronounced. But in this video, the first 10, uh, I think they were overrepresented there a bit. So, we're just going to go with one steel smelter array here, with a dedicated iron smelter array, so that we have one array driving the bus belt, and we have one array driving the steel smelter, which I think you actually need five to one there. And we acknowledge that in the video, but it's just not worth the time. Like it would consume all of our iron ore input and it's just not worth it. Um, scale up copper some. I think we might get a second copper array there. And we're trying to kind of honor the four belts of whatever with two spaces in between so you can run underground belts across start to look at power a bit start to think about scaling up electric motors here i believe i think we actually might redo this here yeah we do start to replace this with a more tileable design but then right as we start to we decide to end the episode and start a new one and promptly get distracted by why are a lot of resources not flowing that mixed starter patch again is is at it kind of start to get back into the electric motors here knowing that we're going to need them kind of experimenting with some balancers it looks like here we were trying to get i think a a lane balancer going so that because we saw that only the right lane was being pulled on the output side and we wanted it to take from both on the input side because of the sorting splitters that we had earlier here we are back to experimenting with possible designs for 
how to lay out electric motors in the little space that we've left ourselves. This does not end up being where we land. We end up not liking it. And we end up going with something that kind of resembles like half of the way that I do my electric, my green circuits basically. And this is actually, I think this sticks. And this is what we go with. Get some additional gear wheels set up because we don't have enough of those coming in. I'm going to fast forward a bit here because this is quite a little while of us kind of hammering out this design and finalizing it. So at this point, we decide to proactively deal with some biters again. Just kind of do the whole kiting maneuver in the car, which works out just fine. From here, we start to plan out another smelter array. Although this actually takes a little while for us to actually set it up. Start to scale up some more coal. At this point, we have four turbine generators going and we're just about to start to actually make boilers. I forget if that array is going to be copper or iron. We'll find out soon enough. I actually start to get some real electric generation down compared to what we had. Get some coal coming to it because those turbine generators are just a non-starter at this point. There's a big efficiency hit on those. It's an interesting thing, too. It's like if it's a turbine, where does the steam come from, right? Go down and start to flush out the rest of the big iron mine that we need to add. And I'm actually going to skip the rest of this video because we don't do much else here. We add a couple of belts, make some more spaghetti, and talk about what we're going to do in the next video, and then we're done. So here we start thinking about two things. One is military science and one is oil. Uh, we've been putting off oil for a while, uh, knowing that we need to get plastic and all sorts of other things. We start to put down our oil derricks here and then get distracted. We realize more things that we need in the mall. We continue to work on green signs. I think we just sealed off that core seam. I'm not sure. In retrospect, I should have just built right over that. There are enough core seams. Although, maybe not. Maybe I shouldn't have. I haven't really gotten into core mining yet. And so here, it actually... You can see my pain. I'm hovering concrete and thinking and talking about it a lot. Uh, concrete is involved in a lot more recipes in space exploration, including big power poles, which... 30 hours in, I still refuse to really make because the concrete hurt my feelings so badly by being required for big power poles. So here we go, and this is actually where you start to see the first of my viewers really kind of letting me down. They just let me lose a car by not warning me how to handle that. Um, there's the second car. Uh, we just lost car number two. Uh, now we're starting to try to get smarter. Looks like we killed a few more biters, but there's car number three. I'm not sure if this was, uh, DJ or Gort's fault. I'd have to check the comments. Here's car number four. Uh, it looks like car number four goes in circles quickly enough to defeat the biters. So here, after freshly having our ego bruised, we realize that we need to go back to thinking about military science, and so we work on getting coal onto the bus, uh, because military science is grenades, which involve coal, and stone walls, and I think the second tier of magazines. Most of that is unchanged. Uh, stone walls are different. There's like different, there's stone walls and there's concrete walls, but stone is all that's required for military science. Here we are about to be shooting a rock out of frustration after we crashed into about the 20th rock and now we're actually placing down the assemblers to actually create military science and get them over to the research labs. This is episode number seven. In the beginning of this we realized that we never did actually hook up our oil and we are actually going to really need it in order to do much of anything past this point. So we prioritize getting that down there, shoot some rocks along the way, start to work on the mall again. The spaghetti hasn't even really begun, but you can kind of see the hints of it here. This is going to be more mall prep work. In this case, we need 
flamethrowers and well flamethrower turrets and so we also need multi-cylinder engines we're going to use those in conjunction with pipes and the walls from the military science area to start to secure this area up here i don't think this area actually does ever get attacked uh up here i, I think i kind of overestimated the amount of pollution that the pump jacks would create but like in vanilla flamethrowers are just the kind of end-all be-all defense for the as soon as you get them uh, until the present for me currently i haven't found anything that is any better than them so far i mean i know i have the railgun but if you know what that is spoiler alert and then over here we start to wall off a couple of the hot spots where we were definitely having biters come through. Uh, haven't quite realized at this point, I think, that shallow water is my enemy and that I need to address it. And so there are technically some holes in this defense, but thankfully the biters will, for the most part, focus on the turrets, even though they can technically get around the walls that protect them. And then here we need to start to scale stone up because the stone that was available in the starter patch was already pretty sparse. There wasn't a lot of it, both in terms of how many miners we could get going on it and in terms of how much stone was there in general. So we needed to expand up here and we get into some silly goofy stuff toward the end here, making a uh, lane output lane balancer in order to, because apparently our input is really favoring the left lane there and there was some experimentation and cursing and swearing and so on and it looks like we still don't have it here at some point we get it at some point like right yeah that's where i look it up i think is right around here so this is episode eight and here's where we actually have crude oil to work with we start to think about getting refineries down and there's I forget if it happens in this episode or the next, but there's a mishap with advanced oil processing. I don't think that we get there yet. So we're starting to figure out how we're going to do sulfur and stuff. And we built it way away from the base so that we'd have room to expand it. And then still, later on, spoiler alert, we run out of room to expand several parts of our oil setup. And we have to do crazy things with pipes in order to escape our own self-inflicted issues. Right around here, we get cliff explosives, which have been much needed and overdue for a while. Uh, there's always kind of a, no pun, a cliff or a plateau that I hit right around oil processing in both vanilla and apparently in space exploration, where I just don't want to deal with it and actually go make like cliff explosives and all the other oil derivative things that I'm going to need. Here we start to set up green circuits. Uh, this is a tileable design that I use in my vanilla save, and we definitely tile this. Um, you have the, because there's like a 1 to 4 ratio there. Uh, in vanilla, you have iron plates and copper cable required to make green circuits. In space exploration, you have stone tablets, I think they're called, which you get four of for each input stone brick, uh, which is when I said earlier in this video that stone bricks are way more used in space exploration that was a big part of why is green circuits that's probably the main thing that comes to mind among other things so here we're setting up a temporary landfill assembler and figuring out that each one costs 50 and so you we can make a very finite number of them before we actually just completely run out of stone even with the new stone mine that we just set up here we start to clean up the iron ore coming in a little bit and get really annoyed with winding up with so much of it in our inventory. Here we start to automate in our mall chemical plants and oil refineries and I kind of advocate for my philosophy of spaghetti here a bit and you can start to see the you know, the spaghetti is, is starting to boil a bit, and you start to see some twists in it. It's not straight anymore, like it comes out of the box, and it's only going to get worse from here. Uh, the spaghetti's going to get twisted together, the spaghetti's going to go underground. All sorts of stuff's going to happen with the spaghetti at this point. So this is episode 9, and in this one we're going to get into oil products heavily. Uh, we're going to flush out sulfur the rest of the way. 
in a little bit here afterward we're gonna get right into plastic and start to scale that up quickly kind of find some bottlenecks here uh, but it's enough to get us going here we just copy paste the little sulfur setup that we had and switch it all over to plastic in a couple seconds here forgetting for a second that we need to actually bring in coal and that that's a part of plastic it doesn't just get made out of petroleum gas so there go the belts for the coal we'll figure that out and that we have to get that all the way up there um lamenting the entire way surely you can watch the actual full long play if you'd like to hear the uh the complaining in its entirety there goes the plastic now we're basically just bringing our oil products that we just got set up onto the bus, realizing that we're going to collide with the incoming iron ore because we didn't leave ourselves enough room for the bus. I partially just kind of blame the map for that. This, again, I think this was kind of a rough start. I did not look at the preview at all. I should have said that earlier in the video. I didn't look at the preview for this seed at all. I just hit go, didn't care. I, I kind of like to see... You know, what What I get surprised with by the game, and, uh, well, I paid the price. Here we're going to start to think about red circuits, and I think I actually came up with a pretty cool design. We're setting up the a completely separate uh, little green circuit production area here, dealing with some biters on the side, repairing their damage that they did. Uh, looks like we go and actually fight some. I think there might be a mishap here. I can't remember. I can see myself producing more ammo. So we correct our mistakes with the iron. So we're setting up this entirely separate green circuit production area in order to feed the red circuit production without interrupting the circuits right to the right of us here that feed the green circuit belt on the bus. Probably need like two or three green circuit belts on the bus, if not more. And we didn't leave ourselves enough room for that either. Uh, but that's actually, that hasn't been corrected yet. This is actually a red circuit design that I started tinkering with that I ended up really liking. It's direct fed on the copper wire, the ratios are balanced, and it's not probably not the most space efficient, but the fact that the ratios for the copper wire are balanced and it has kind of a cool pattern made me very happy. So this is episode 10 and we're actually gonna hook up our clever red circuit design not that i know if it's that clever or not but i definitely liked it and we start to tie a little bit this is all in preparation for blue science and a ton of other stuff that requires red circuits here we're doing prep to do uh multi-cylinder engine production at scale uh multi-cylinder engines are kind of to me the analog of just engine units in vanilla they, I think, are just a smidge harder. I can't remember, honestly. They they do build off of single-cylinder engines, uh, which makes sense, because, of course, you know, in real life, if you want an eight-cylinder engine, you just, you know, whatever, duct tape or weld uh, eight one-cylinder engines together. And that's, again, to get blue science. And I think that blue science is, like, the last science pack that you need before you can really start looking at rocket science which is exciting but we were starting to get a little bit ahead of ourselves thinking that we were anywhere near going to space at this point maybe if we had scaled more we would have been closer than we thought but there just turned out to be so many more things we needed and so these are the actual blue science batteries that are going down here so then we go back up to the oil area the oil processing area and we start to set up a separate array of sulfur production or just the purpose of making sulfuric acid so that it's separate from the sulfur production that goes onto the belt. I guess I could have used the splitter but I just figured why not separate it. And there's a couple other things we do in this video. You know we continue to implement that. We get our sulfuric acid. I forget what that's required for. Uh, blue circuits come to mind but I don't think that we're doing blue circuits yet. It might have been something else. But so, this is going to start to draw to a close here. This was approximately 10 hours. I am going to cut some sections out of it, you know, so that you're not sitting there watching me for 20 seconds kind of blabber, because there were definitely some periods of dialogue. I hope that you enjoyed watching this. 
This is a way more condensed version of the usual format that I do, just to kind of give people the grand overview of everything that we've experienced so far, at least for these 10 episodes that we did. If you enjoyed this, one, there will be more of these. I'm going to do more of these sort of compilations at high speed. Two, I would love feedback if you think I should focus more on the montage side of things, or if you'd like me to cut it up more or less. I'd love to know that. Let me know what you think. Uh, and three, if you like space exploration videos in general, you can always check out my long plays. There's quite a bit of content in those. Like, we really do do analysis on ratios and other stuff. And we have a few laughs in the comments and on the Discord. And speaking of, if you would like to, please join our Discord. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And hopefully we'll see you next time. Have a good one.